Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to St. George Church for the celebration of the baptism of the Lord. The celebrant for today is Father Paul, assisted by Deacon Joe Truesdale. And Mass is being celebrated for the intentions of Eleanor Wojcik and Judy Rock. This week at St. George, coming soon, St. George School Strike It Rich raffle. The grand prize is $10,000. We will keep you posted when tickets start sales through a St. George School family or the school or rectory office. Please see the bulletin for additional details and other church announcements. And as a courtesy to others, please silence all cell phones and other electronic devices. At our baptism, we were told, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Jesus Christ. Each Sunday, we come here a new creation, transformed, even if we are not conscious of it. Baptism has created us anew, has given us new life. Also, no matter what we may be wearing, we are clothed in Christ. In what we do and what others see, we hope to show that we have put on Christ. On this feast of the baptism of the Lord, let us appreciate the new creation we have become. We greet one another in the Lord. Please stand and wave a friendly greeting to those around you.
appeared in our very flesh. Grant that we may be inwardly transformed through him whom we recognize as outwardly like ourselves. He lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without pain and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully, listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way, and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord.
Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak to those gathered in the house of Cornelius, saying, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. You know the word that he sent to the Israelites as he proclaimed peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. What has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. The word of the Lord. It is the feast of the baptism of the Lord, and that's what I would like to talk about. But sometimes we can't talk about what we want to talk about because other things come into our lives, change things. Yesterday I was on the internet, made phone calls, then visited my mother, would have been my folks' anniversary yesterday. Got gas. This morning I took a walk over to the Jewel to get some food. Everything seemed so ordinary, even in light of the fact that Wednesday we could have lost everything that this country has stood for since 1776. The world watched as the most sacred symbols of American democracy were desecrated, desecrated by a mob of vandals. 
The very symbols men and women have died for serving our country were defiled by thugs. Windows smashed, doors broken down, offices ransacked, emblems stolen. Big men of little minds yelled, this is the people's house. Is that how you treat your house? Because it is the people's house. It has always been a place of honor. It's, it's hallowed ground. All the chants of USA, USA, and the august stars and stripes unfurled, while all along, in reality, this gang was spitting on it. Some have called for revolution. Revolution towards what? And who would lead it? Them? Our elected officials, whether you like them or not, the American people did elect them, had to flee. The Vice President of the United States had to be pulled off the rostrum because his life and the life of every other person there was in peril. Congressmen were calling their families to say they loved them, fearing it might be the last time. And even as this rampage was going, there was some defending this thing, trying to justify it by asking, how is this any different from the uh, unrest of the summer? Well, there are a few things I could say, but I will limit it to one. In the summer, the president was quick and constant and correct in condemning them as rioters and criminals. This time, he could only say he understands them, he loves them, and they are special. The truth is that patriotism means to stand with the country. It does not mean to stand with the president. I didn't say that. Theodore Roosevelt did. What we have witnessed is not law and order. It is not leadership. It is not the American way. Because underneath all the bluster and anger and name-calling, we know America is better than that. We know it because we've seen it. We're a proud people. Perfect, no. But at least in their words, our leaders in the past have challenged us to ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Called us to, to look to our higher angels and gave us aspirations to be that shining city on a hill. How did we get to the point where if, we dis if you disagree with me, not only are you wrong, but you're evil? For having your own ideas, and your own thoughts, your own way of seeing things? Families have broken up because of politics. Now, what do you make of that? They have decided that someone who they don't even know is more important than their own flesh and blood. How does that happen? Why would we let it happen? And then there's the poison of social media. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, God has given us a moment when our eyes can finally be open to what we've become and help us to see that we can be better. The beauty of America is when we can fight it out, we can argue, and at the end one says, let's go get a drink, and the other says, okay, I'm buying. We have to relearn the art of compromise and allow for give and take and to be humble enough to see that maybe, just maybe, the other guy has a point. But in order to get there, we have to decide. We have to decide to be a nation that deals with the truth that forms our opinions, not our opinions forming a false truth. We have so many things we need to do together. We have to vanquish this pandemic. Too many people are dying. We have to revive our economy. Too many people in the United States are waiting in food lines today. Our children need to be educated. Our sick need care. And we all need to feel safe on our streets and in our homes. 
The Trump administration was very challenging for Catholics. The Biden administration will be very challenging for Catholics. And as Catholics, it is for us to exercise faithful citizenship, to make our voices heard for the unborn, the underprivileged, the oppressed, Mother Earth, economic justice, and so many others. That can only happen as Catholics with honesty, compassion, civility, and God-given wisdom. At the end of today's Mass, we will sing America the Beautiful. The last words will be, America, America, God mend thine every flaw. Confirm thy soul in self-control, thy liberty in law. The world is asking America a question. I heard it Wednesday when Father Tom came to my room and asked me, what is happening to your democracy? stand together. We profess that which we most deeply believe. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Lord and Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Charles Jude, 
Michael Gibbons, Albert Petrucci, Francis Mazza, Jacqueline Frigo, and her wife. We pray to the Lord. God of all goodness and grace, it is you who have given us so many blessings and gifts. You allow us to know you. You allow us to live in this great and beautiful country. Help us, Lord, to appreciate these gifts and to cherish them. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable to God, our loving Father. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of Him who willed in His compassion wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us. And by the Spirit's descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ your servant has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Jesus took bread into his hands 
and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, Jesus took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
My brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word and my soul shall be healed. And I invite the folks who are watching at home now to take a moment and offer a, an act of spiritual communion, asking that God will be with you, protect you, and dwell in your hearts.
Let us pray. O Lord, nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly ask your mercy that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless us all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord all your life. Thank you. Thank you.